One Piece chapter 820 death review. This was a really good chapter. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that happened because a lot of it was just conversation and introductions and showing off the character, but I am going to give my thoughts on what happened. So, first of all, Yo Yoji? I love Yoji. I think that's his name. If I'm saying the name wrong, tell me in the comments. But Yoji is awesome. Yoji, how he freaked out when he saw Nami and he just likes Sanji. Really cool. Uh, I believe Sanji is his... He is Sanji's little brother? Yeah. He's Sanji's little brother, but I could be wrong. But, I really liked that. His character was cool. He was kind of, So he was pretty much like Sanji with the whole perverted, lecherous, like... You know, get really freaked out around women, but an asshole version. He's, he's an asshole Sanji, pretty much. Because he even said when the Straw Hats are begging him, including Nami, so a woman is asking for his help. And he said, no, I don't want to help people. If you guys want to get the antidote for your cat, then you're going to need to steal it. You're a pirate, aren't you? So steal something. So, I do like this point he's making because I don't think they've stolen anything that's like Skypea. Like, the Straw Hats don't really break the law a lot and do things involving, well, um, piracy. Even though they're, well, pirates. But, that was a thing. And then there's, of course, his Sanji sister, who I think is his older sister, Reiji. Reiji. I'm gonna call her Reiji. I could be wrong about the pronunciation of these. I am going to wait until I've heard them either said in the anime, which is when I'll get the official pronunciation, or at least until I see them in V-Jump. But that is besides the point. This is very interesting, mostly because we are getting insight on Sanji's family. Now, Sanji's sister, Reiji, as I'm going to be calling her, offered to help out Luffy after knocking her brother out. Not only knocking him out, but kind of Pushing him aside, pretty much saying he's bringing shame to himself and their family to like screw off. But, so she goes up and she, I don't want to say she's a perv, but she definitely like the way she's extracting the poison from Luffy is very like deductive and like lustful. Like I just want to say, is it, are all the vine folk kind of like pervy like Sanji? I'm not really sure. But so she has, so she uh, extracts the poison from Luffy. Now, I have my doubts about this. Because she, she does mouth to mouth and then breathes the poison into her own body and just contains it. Chopper said if you were to take out all the poison and put it into your own body, you would die. But this woman is fine. She calls herself the Poison Pink. Now, the reason I'm curious about this is because we've already seen so many poison devil fruit users. I'm wondering, is she really a devil fruit user, or is it all just connected to the highly advanced technology they talked about? In fact, who knows, maybe they created the Trap Fonder Snail or the Dendem Mushi. I, just a thought, but now I really do want to talk about who the Vine Smokes really are, besides the fact that they are a family of assassins. Now this is where things get interesting, so Sanji's family are royalty. The royalty and years ago the Vine Smoke family used to rule over all of the North Blue with an iron fit. That is why they're so infamous. However, be they eventually left that area. We don't know why, but they're no longer in the North Blue ruling it. But they're still royalty. They just don't have a home. They don't have land to rule over. But because they are still by, like, legally, by law, royalty, they are still granted access to the reverie, which further supports my theory that VV connection to the Straw Hats is going to be exposed at the reverie, forcing her to, ju forcing VV to join the crew, because I want VV on the crew. I wanted her on the crew since day one. I love VV. VV is amazing. Yes, she would need to train to get stronger. But the Straw Hat could help with that, and just, yeah, Vivi. No, but back to the chapter. After the, uh, after Raiji, Raiji is done extracting the poison from Luffy, 
she pretty much, they, her and her brother pretty much tell the straw hat to screw off. They, well first they, the people, they don't seem like bad people. Because they do say, thank you straw hat Luffy for taking care of Sanji. However, apparently everything, everything was du Duval, all of it, it's all connected. Because apparently they started hearing years ago about a pirate named Black Leg Sanji on the ship of Straw Hat Luffy, the crew, the Straw Hat. But they never got a real picture of him because his picture was always drawn. And then there was the confusion with Duval and everything. However, after the Straw Hat re-emerged two years later in Tabodi Archipelago, and Luffy the Theodore Flamingo, an updated bounty poster was released for Sanji containing a real picture of him. A picture of his real thing, the Vine folks found out about this because they had been searching for him since he left them at an early age, which we kind of already knew because common sense, right? No, but, no, but really, so they knew, they, uh, then they made the arrangement with, with the government to take away his bounty and make it so he would want, be wanted only alive. I'm not sure if Akai knew what part of this agreement, I doubt it. I honestly highly doubt Akai Inu would ever in a million years let the son of Dragon crewmate we have a bounty that where he wants it only alive. I would have met Akai Inu once the entire crew dead. But now I do want to talk about, of course, the big part of the chapter, which is the ending. So after all the explanations had been given and they had thanked Luffy for all he had done, they told him it best if we both tread carefully, and they pretty much tell them, you guys need to leave. They're pretty blunt about it. They're pretty much saying, you guys, just stay out of our, stay out of Sanji business, stay out of this. Like, don't get involved. And what happens here is that they pretty much state that if they were to attack the Straw Hat, that would throw off the agreement between Sanji and Big Mom, which is true. Because, the, on though, Sanji said, I will go with you, but you must leave my friends alone. So unless the Straw Hat directly attacks Big Mom, until this wedding is over, she can't hurt the Straw Hat. I never even thought of that. That was the deal Sanji made. And if they're going to honor that deal, they have to stay away from the crew. Now, Luffy did start a fight with Big Mom, so you could argue with that. But the point here is that they pretty much think they can't attack the Straw Hat because of the wedding. So the, and they were actually going to surprise Sanji and see him, but apparently they got lost or something. Nothing happened. Now, uh, the, since the woman is a pervert, I just want to throw this idea out there. What if that woman is in love, falls in love with Zoro? Like Hancock did with Luffy, something like that. Just, just an idea. Just an idea. It would be freaking hilarious. Sanji's sister loving Zoro. I mean, freaking priceless, and she's a pervert like Sanji, and she'd be running around all over him just like Sanji. Female Sanji in love with Zoro. Needs to happen. It would be so funny. Zoro would hate it so much. No, but that was just a little idea I had, like, a little idea for a comedy thing they could do. But yeah, so they leave, and then after the, you know, the Straw Hat and Sanji's family part ways, we cut to underwater where a fifth man is receiving orders and he is confirming to, over a Den Den Mushi that he has looked that Straw Hat Luffy is on board the ship and he then said the name of the character Jinbei. Jinbei back. Now, I'm not going to talk about this much because I'm going to be doing a video on it on you know, why I don't want Jinbei to join my crew. Don't get me wrong, I am happy Jinbei is back. Jinbei being back is great. Jinbei is freaking awesome. I love Jinbei. However, I'm not going to sit here and say I want him to be a straw hat. I don't. Jinbei does not need to join the crew to be cool. So, yeah, Jinbei back. We'll see where this goes next week. Hopefully, we can stay on a more consistent schedule. Maybe at least for a little bit. I want to at least get back into the hole. We get like three, four chapters, and then we go on break. Then for a little bit there, we, I felt like we didn't get three chapters in a row consistently for like over two months. I don't think we did. So, yeah. E yeah, even like the last like ten chapters, it's like, it's only been like six chapters since they left though. It just, it feels like we haven't been getting as much content as we used to. So 
so I'm hoping we can get back into a more consistent schedule. But I completely understand Oda and his need to take breaks. But there's no break next week, so that's not a problem. But yeah, I do have a video I'll be re I will be recording either later today or tomorrow or tomorrow or the day after that at some point about why I don't want Jinbei to join the crew. But yeah, so yeah, look forward to that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me your thoughts on the comment. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you want more videos like this, more reviews, live reaction, one piece discussion, I review my Boruto chapter when those are out, all that kind of stuff. If you want any of that, please subscribe for that. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out.